here is your grammar chapter one test review tutorial, which is about sentences. So the first thing that we're going to look at is the sentence. A sentence is a word group that contains a subject and a verb and expresses a complete thought. So it has to have all three of these. It has to have a subject, a verb, and it needs to express a complete thought. So sentence fragments is a group of words that looks like a sentence but does not contain both a subject and a verb or it does not express a complete thought. So you can be missing a subject, a verb, or it just does not express a complete thought. Okay, so let's do some practice. The dazzling color of the sky over the canyon. Is this a sentence or a sentence fragment? It is a sentence fragment because it does not have a predicate or a verb. All right, the next one. We woke up early. Is this a sentence or a sentence fragment? It is a sentence. Here is your subject and there is your verb. And it expresses a complete thought. Next one, the long exhausting trip down to the bottom of the canyon. Is this a sentence or a sentence fragment? All right, this one is also a sentence fragment. It is missing a verb. Next one. Rented them for a reasonable fee. Is this a sentence or a sentence fragment? It is a fragment. It is missing a subject. The last one. My brother and I slept. Is this a sentence or a sentence fragment? It is a sentence. You have the subject, and there's your verb. All right, so every sentence has two basic parts. It has the subject, and it has the predicate. The subject tells whom or what the sentence is about. It is also the person or thing that performs the action. To find the subject, you need to ask yourself who or what does, has, or is something. Now, the predicate tells something about the subject and it includes the verb. Now, to find the predicate, ask yourself what the subject does, has, or is. So, we know that the subject tells whom or what the sentence is about. So, a complete subject of a sentence consists of all of the words needed to tell whom or what the sentence is about. So, let's look at this next sentence. A basket full of peaches sat upon the orchard wall. All right, so remember that a complete subject is who or what is doing the verb plus all of the modifiers or descriptive words that go with it. Read the sentence below. A basket full of peaches sat upon the orchard wall. So if you ask yourself who or what sat upon the orchard wall, it is a basket full of peaches. All right, so a simple subject is the main word or word group that tells whom or what the sentence is about. So now we want to find the simple subject. So who or what sat upon the orchard wall? It is the basket. Now let's go to the next sentence. Georgia O'Keeffe was born 
on a farm in 1887. So who was born on the farm in 1887? It was George O'Keefe. Now this is our complete subject. It is also our simple subject. Because remember, if it's a proper noun, it would be both. So these are hard to find subjects. One of them is in questions. The subject will come after the verb. Try changing the question into a statement to help you find the subject. Example, where were Tuskegee Airmen in World War II? So you would change this to Tuskegee Airmen were in World War II. Now, who or what was in World War II? you know it is the Tuskegee Airmen. So that is your subject. Another one that is hard to find are um, sentences that command. So in a command sentence, the subject is always you. For example, read this book about African American soldiers. Who, who is reading the book about African American soldiers? The answer is you. All right, so another one is inverted subjects, or this is when the um, subject doesn't always come in the beginning of the sentence. So in inverted sentences, the subject comes after the verb. Inverted sentences often begin with there or here. And here is an example. There is a museum in Tuskegee. So who or what? is in Tuskegee? It is a museum. One thing that is important to remember is that the subject is never part of a prepositional phrase. A prepositional phrase always begins with a preposition like in, on, at, between, among. Remember it shows relationship um, either in where something is or where something is in time. Um, and it, the prepositional phrase will end with a noun or a pronoun. All right, so compound subjects consist of two or more subjects that are joined by a connecting word, a conjunction, like and, or, or nor. They also share the same verb. So compound subjects is two or more subjects. They're joined by a connecting word and they also share the same verb. All right. All right, for the example, you and your friends can make calls with your cell phones. So the subjects are you and your friends and the verb that you share is can make. All right, the next example. Under the rug were dust and dirt. This is one of those um, sentences where the subject isn't at the beginning. What was under the rug? It was dust and dirt. And the verb that they share is were. All right, next one. During the open house, parents and relatives viewed the student's work. So here we have a um, sentence that begins with a prepositional phrase. So we know that the subject is not during the open house. So parents and relatives viewed the student's work. Who viewed the student's work? It was parents and relatives, and the verb that they share is viewed. All right, the predicate. The predicate is part of the sentence that tells something about the subject. It always will include the verb. Now the complete pre predicate consists of a verb and all of the words that describe a verb and complete its meaning. 
The predicate usually, not always, but usually comes after the subject. But sometimes part of, or all of the predicate comes before the subject. All right, so let's look at this sentence, for, exam for example. Carefully, Sandra worked the math problem. All right, so the first thing that I like to do is I like to find the verb. So I know that worked is my verb because it is the action. So then I can find the subject by asking who or what worked the math problem. And I know that is Sandra. Okay, now I can say that the rest of it is the predicate. Now to find the complete predicate, I want to ask myself what the subject does, has, or is. So what did Sandra do? Well, Sandra worked the math problem carefully. That is the complete predicate. All right, so the next part is simple predicates or the verb. And it is the main word or word group in the complete predicate. It is always the verb or verb phrase. So a simple predicate could be a single verb or a verb phrase. And a verb phrase is a verb with one or more helping verbs. So if we go back to the sentence that we just read, carefully Sandra worked the math problem. So I know that my the word worked is the, sim, the, the simple predicate or the verb. Let's go to the next sentence. Daily meals should include generous servings of vegetables. So I always like to find the subject first. So I would ask myself, what should include generous servings of vegetables? That would be daily meals. Now I can say that the rest of my sentence is the complete predicate. Should include generous servings of vegetables. Now I have to find the verb or the verb phrase. Well, I know that include is the verb, but I know that should is a helping verb, so my complete verb phrase is going to be should include. So this would be your simple predicate or verb or verb phrase. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about verb phrases. A verb phrase has the main verb and one or more helping verbs. So here's a list of common helping verbs that you are probably going to run into, um, especially on your test. Am, are, be, been, being, can, do, does, had, has, have, is, may, might, must, was, were, would, should, could. So if you see one of these words, there's going to be a verb next to it, and that is going to make up a verb phrase. All right, so let's look at the first one. Has he been practicing for half an hour? So right away, I, I see two helping verbs. I see has, and I have seen been. So I would know that my complete verb phrase is has been practicing. Next question, she has taken painting classes. Again, I see has, and I know that will be part of a verb phrase, has taken. My suggestion to you is that you become very familiar with this list of helping verbs. Okay, so compound verbs. A compound verb consists of two or more verbs that are joined by a connecting word, a conjunction, and that have the same sub subject. So compound verbs consist of two or more verbs that are joined by a connecting word and have the same subject. All right, let's look at our examples. We shouted and cheered for our team. 
So I know when I look at this, I know shouted and cheered are actions, so they are verbs. They are joined by this conjunction and they share the same subject. Next one. We enjoyed our family vacation and will remember it fondly. Okay, so we enjoyed our family vacation and will remember it fondly. So I can see that we have a conjunction right here. And I see enjoyed is a verb. It's an action. And will remember is a verb phrase and they share the same subject, which is we. The next one, my older brother Carlos surfed the big waves or read a book. So here's my conjunction right here. And here's a verb, read. Here's another verb, surfed, because they are both actions. And the subject is my older brother Carlos. All right, the last thing that will be on your test is kinds of sentences. A declarative sentence. It makes a statement and ends with a period. This is most um, sentences, and it always ends with a period. Imperative sentences. It gives a command or a request. Most end with a period, but if it is a strong command, it will end with an exclamation point. So you can have period or exclamation point. Interrogative sentences asks a question and ends with a question mark. It can never be anything else but a question mark. Did she say anything to him? Question mark. Exclamatory sentence shows excitement or expresses strong feelings and ends with an exclamation point. It can never end with anything else but an exclamation point. All right, here are some practice sentences. I want to make a kite this week. This is declarative, and you can see it has a period. What time does the kite flying festival start on Saturday? This is an interrogative, and therefore it gets a question mark. Don't let the paper get too wrinkled. This is a command, so it is imperative. I do not think that it is a strong enough command to give it an exclamation point, so I will give it a period. What a perfect breeze this is. This is an exclamatory sentence. It shows some excitement. So this one gets an exclamation point. Watch out for that tree. This is also an imperative because it makes a command and the person sounds like they're really trying to warn somebody, so I'm going to give it an exclamation. All right, for your test, the first 10 will be multiple choice. You will read a sentence and you will have to identify either simple predicates, complete pred predicate, um, simple subjects, complete subjects, compound subjects, compound verbs. Um, there will be another part where you read a sentence and you will have to decide what type of sentence it is, either exclamatory, imperative, interrogative, declarative. This would be multiple choice as well. Um, you will read sentences and have to decide whether they are sentences or sentence fragments. You will also read sentences and have to identify the complete subjects and simple subjects. Um, you will read another set of sentences and have to identify complete predicates and simple predicates, which is verbs or verb phrases. You will read another set of sentences and have to identify subjects and verbs. The last part you will read sentences, identify what type of sentence they are, and add the correct punctuation.